You give before you receive. You become a valuable person, and people remember you, and that's the first step. To be referred, you got to be remembered. I've got David Knox with me. David, welcome back to the show. Thanks Thank for being with us again. Thank you. Glad to be here. What should agents be doing right now with their sphere of influence? Calling them. Okay. Tell me more. Period. Nobody does it. I have been doing, I don't know, I've done 3,500 seminars and, and I'll stand up in front of an audience and ask, hey, how many of you have telephoned your sphere of influence? And, uh, you know, everybody kind of looks away because they know they haven't done it. And maybe about 5% of them have done it. So when you take a look at the 95.5, there you go. I mean, it's a sign of it. You know, 95% of agents don't do anything and wonder why they don't have any money. And the 5% get on it. But I believe, uh, depending on who you go to, uh, you know, 80% of commission revenue uh, generated comes from sphere of influence. I mean, that's from that's where people buy and sell. Um, and I've heard some people say, well, customers are moving away from referrals to online. And they're saying that online is because they're going online, they're not relying on their previous agents. And I will challenge that. And I will say they're going online because their previous agents haven't called. They got no place to go. I think they've got the cause and effect reversed. I mean, if somebody calls me and they are a good solution, I don't need to go online. You know, and again, in a live audience, I say, how many of you are married? And the hands go up. And I said, if you are married, it's axiomatic. One, either you or your spouse had to interrupt the other person. Somebody had to make that introduction. So one person had to walk up to the other and say, hello. I don't care if it was in a Starbucks line where you say, oh, you know, whatever. Somebody had to take the risk. If you want to get married, if you want to date, somebody has to take the risk of introducing, interrupting. So now you get into how, how might I interrupt her without bothering her? And of course, you can go through this stupid things guys do like, oh, but, you know, I wouldn't even do some of those things. But uh, so how do you interrupt without bothering? And that is kind of a fine art. That okay. gets down to finesse, it gets down to manners, it gets down to timing. Uh, if I'm going to call somebody, I'll usually call business phones first because they can't get mad at you for that. And if I can't get through, then I'll call a cell phone. But as soon as I hear that they're driving, I may go, hey, I, it sounds like I caught you driving. You want me to call it another time? And of course, one of the oldest lines taught in sales, Jay Douglas said, probably taught it, is this a good time to call? And um, uh, in the book, uh, never split the difference. Chris Bro Boss actually talks about asking the opposite way. Said, "Is this a bad time to call?" Because people are more likely to say no. Some of these are just language tricks, and I'm not a fan of tricks. But you can try it both ways. But you know, you you know, you do your friends. You call, "Hey, Bobby, how are you doing?" Hey, did I catch you at a good time? No, I'm good, or whatever. So, uh, so try to so pick your time. So when you're calling sphere of influence, think it through. What would be a, a prudent time to call? And if it turns out that it is a bother, hey, I'm sorry, my kids in the bathtub. I can't talk right now. Great you know, move on, uh, do something else. I think the highest risk of bothering is for sale by owners and expires, but it's also the highest, best to see your time in order to get listings. So if you have the courage to do it, but even then, uh, knocking on a for sale by owner, you know, to walk up and say, you ain't never going to sell this house because you are an idiot. If you could do it yourself, there wouldn't be such thing as a tours. So you're stupid for selling your own home. I think that would come across as a bother, but if you call up, Hey, my name is David Knox. You know, I saw you were selling a home. Just uh, do a lot of work in the neighborhood. I just want to introduce myself and stop. And they're going to say either, uh-huh, allow you to talk. Or they're going to go, not now. We're not going to list right now. Well, thanks for your time. I'll pop you check on you later. And then get out of there before they get angry with you. But as far as calling, if when you're dialing the phone, you're wondering, am I interrupting or bothering? You could wonder all day long. You'll make no calls if you ask yourself that question. So you pick your time, you pick your dialogue, and then make your call. We talked about interrupting versus bothering, choosing your time, uh, trying to think it through. But the real way to avoid bothering people is to have a message that is favorable, have a favorable person, reason for calling. And the three that come to mind are thank, invite, and inform. So the first one, and this is something absolutely every single person on this presentation today must do beginning right after this is to thank their past clients for business. It's not a sales call. It's not even a service call. 
<laughs> so first thing, you can do it in either order, but one of the one of the messages, I just want to check in with you guys as a valued past client. I just want to see how you're doing. And then the second thing, and then say the other reason I want to call and just I want to say thank you for your business. I appreciate that you guys purchased through me a number of years ago. And I just want you to know I still it still means a lot to me or listed with me or or referred. So now what about if you don't have past customers and clients? So if anybody's listening to this and you know I don't have past customers and clients. Uh, you can't thank them for your business. So the next thing you can do, and again, it may not be appropriate now, but I'm still going to present it. And that is invite them to an event. Invite them to an event. Making it axiomatic, you must have an event. So what would they be? Best events or charity events? And, uh, um, you know, if you wrap it around a charity, people feel good about getting involved. So if you have a charity whatever that might be, you know, it could be just, you know, dog rescue in your, whatever it is. I'm not going to try to steer you on that. Uh, but you could wrap it around a, a charity event. Even if you're a new agent, you can have people over for whatever football party. Of course, they say that they're not playing football. So, so many of the events that I want to present, you can't do them anymore. So you're going to have to be creative. And for people who say, well, there's not a lot of good events out there. Well, there's not a lot of good events out there for anybody. So if you're the one who rises above it, which, by the way, that brings up another point. If there was ever a time to gain market share, now is it. So the next uh, third thing you can do, again, thank, invite, inform. So past clients, thank them. Um, the referrals fall into that, too. Next is invite them to an event. And, um, and then the third is to inform. And it's not as exciting as the other ones. But you could certainly call up and, and just call up. Hey, Jim, this is David Knox. I am giving you a call because I've had more of you know, hey, the, Jim, this is David Knock. By the way, is this a good time to call? Yeah, it's pretty good. Great. Well, I'll tell you why I'm calling. Uh, first of all, how you? Well, I'm sorry. I'm trying to make up dialogue as I'm going, but just follow the natural course. How are you doing? Hey, the reason I'm calling is I can't tell you how many people think the real estate business absolutely died during this pandemic. And I, I realize it's incumbent upon myself to just let people know that we are busier now than we've been in a long time. There's a pent up demand. And I don't know if, if any of this information is important to you, but it directly affects your home. So whatever. I think, oh, well, thanks very much for calling. And then what you have to do is you you give before you receive. I'm going to get into some dialogue and and purposes of making the call, but I think the first thing you need to do is give before you receive. And I'm so all of us need to be. What can we do for our clients that would fall into the category of showing we care? And you know we could go through a list of a hundred things. Um, one of the things that comes to mind a guy named Bob Wolf, probably one of the top realtors in America. In fact, I just got this from him today. He subscribes to this postcard. I've never read them, but uh, uh, genius shoots at something no one else can see and hits it. You know, cute little phrases. Really doesn't matter. People say, well, what should I have? What color should it be? What should I say? Doesn't matter. One of my best friends, CRS instructor, had a great line when agents ask about what they should do. He goes, anything works and nothing doesn't. I love doing, it. Yeah, doing nothing doesn't work. So here's another one from Bob. The next thing that uh, these guys do before I get into some dialogue um, where should I start? Well, let's stick with Bob. Bob Wolf, uh, he rents out the steakhouse at the Ritz Carlton Laguna Niguel on December 23 every year. Seats 40. He fills it. He buys the whole restaurant. He buys food, wine, valet parking, Christmas gifts, Christmas ornaments, all kinds of stuff. And he picks 40 people. Back to your question on segmenting, who, you know, how do you segment them? The 40 people that he picks are anyone who has referred big transactions to him, bought through him, sold through him. I mean, he comes up with which 40 shall I invite to the Ritz-Carlton today? <laughs> and uh, I remember he invited me to it one year. And I said, Bob, this is spectacular. People are so happy to come. They bring him gifts. There's a, like a wedding table of gifts that they bring him. That's how much they wow. like it. And I said, Bob, this is this has got to be expensive. And he goes, I said, this has got to be a lot of money. He goes, $20,000. I said, 20 grand. Wow, that's a lot of money. Well, the guy makes 2 million. So 20 grand is not a big deal to him. And, he's, and he says, $20,000. And he points to a two top. He says, David, see that two top over there? I made 30,000 just from them. Wow. So basically, you know, one two table pretty much pays for it. So that's the mentality you have, which is another part of sphere of influence. Uh, you've got to invest in them. You must give before you receive in some way. At the very least, a buck, a postcard, a quarter, you know, at least do that. And the other thing he does is it gives out the top 40 get the, the Ritz, the next hundred and some get a huge bouquet of flowers. I'm talking massive, so big that when it comes in, they've got to find a 
they got to clear their foyer to put it in. So for the entire holiday season, people say, where'd you get those? Bob Wolf. <laughs>